This is not conventional knowledge. This is information that just a few hand-selected groups of people outside the professional realm of music have access to. But in this video I'm going to make those four secrets public so that everyone has the same chance of being a better musician. And I promise you it's not information that you have heard ever before. Secret number one, the slower you play, the faster you have to think. You probably think now, that doesn't make any sense. Let me explain. If you play a particularly difficult part or there's a very complex rhythm, you need to slow the music down like crazy. This is our new beat. The problem, the beats are so far away from each other that you lose track of the time in between of them. And here's what I mean by faster. Instead of using quarter notes as our tempo, use a note value that is twice as fast as our current tempo. We do not count four beats per bar. We do count eight beats now, eight eighth notes. Or you could do two bars with each four beats. What did we achieve by doing that? The time between two notes is way shorter so that we do not forget the tempo. And that is way easier to play because we don't have to play as many notes on each beat. You play it 10 times like this, then just speed the tempo up and I promise you, you will be able to play it way better, significantly faster. Here's another trick that you can combine with this. If you have a particularly complex rhythm, don't do any of the articulation written in your sheet music. You will get clear on where each beat is in the bar and if you add the ties again, you will be able to play it easily. If you have problems learning pieces from Bach, this is the reason. You don't know how to play melodies the right way. The good thing, there are just two parameters that you need to fix. One is phrasing. I talked about phrasing very often on this channel. If you don't know what it is, you should check out this video and then come back to this one. Phrasing is super important, period. There's no excuse for not knowing it. The other reason is articulation. You do not probably think about legato, ties, accents, but that's not what I mean. There's a long list tradition, let's say a rule, that occurred in the early 18th century for how not should be played and it is still relevant to play baroque music. Most people are just not aware of it. The rule goes as follows. It's actually pretty simple. If you take two notes, the greater the interval, the greater the space you have to leave between the two notes. A tiny rest. Very important before the second note, so you shorten the first one. The second note must be on the right time, on the right beat. So an interval of a major second is played very tight, nearly legato. And a major seven, you basically jump like little staccato from the first note onto the second one. There's one exception to this rule. You never play two notes tight if there's a bar line in between. Even if the two notes are major second, you always have to make a small cut, except it's legato. Do you believe that there's an underlying logic behind music? Why we do certain phrasing? Why we play things where we play them? Let me tell you, there definitely is, and I'm gonna debunk the myth for you. Here's an easy rule to follow. There's a degree to every sound on how much tension a chord a note can have. You have a normal chord, the tonic, you don't have any tension. The next stage could be the dominant. It has more tension and it wants to resolve itself into the tonic. Then the dominant seventh, and then maybe the fully diminished chord. The higher the chord in the ranking, the more intense you also must play it. Same with suspensions. The more suspensions you have, the more dissonant, the more intense you must play it. Maybe you have a tonic with two suspensions. Then the chord could be even more dissonant, more intense than the dominant. So you have to take the chords as what they are with all their respective notes. In practice, it doesn't work every time. You always have to look in what context the chord is. And in the end, if it sounds bad, don't do it. Your ears always have the last word. The point of this rule is to make it easier for you to recognize patterns. Fully diminished chords are just intense by nature. And composers were aware of this fact and there was probably a reason why they still used them. Here's something crazy that you probably didn't notice yet. Why are certain pieces written in different keys? Here's why. Every key is based on one note, one frequency. And of course all different notes have different frequencies. So all notes and chords sound different. This means even if F sharp major and C major are built exactly the same way in terms of structure, they sound entirely different. When you play a piece, depending on what key you're in, you must try to actively enhance the natural color of this key. For example, E flat major is often considered a more tender, warm color, while D major is a bit more brilliant and royally. Maybe you have realized this for yourself, F sharp major sounds very special. And here's my theory of why. We all know the standard keys like C major, E flat major or G major. But because F sharp major is so unusual and we don't hear it very often, our ears are not accustomed to it. And therefore we perceive it as extremely different and special. 
Think about it like this. If you love pizza and you do not eat pizza for three months, your next pizza is gonna taste so fantastic, so special, and it's the same with keys. Now I need you to go watch this video right here. It's about the most controversial, misinterpreted chord in music history. I promise, if you think you know what the chord is about, you're wrong. Thanks for watching, and we see you on the next one.